Welcome to the Word of Life Center podcast. It's our desire that today's message would equip and empower you to see the Word of God bring life to your life. So I got a message for you tonight. It's called uh, My Best Friend. It's called My Best Friend. It's the title of the message. And But before we get into tonight's message, let me greet everybody that's watching live stream. Thank you for being a part of this message, or maybe you're watching on archives. Uh, thank you for being a part, and thank you for your hunger to hear uh, God and hear His words. So, word of life, let's give everybody that's watching live stream a great big warm welcome. Come on now. Come on there. They're a part of what's happening right now. Amen. And also, let me say this to you. Uh, I know we look really, really good on the device that you're watching us on right now, but we look incredible in person, so you can come check us out sometime. We'll love on you and treat you just like this is your home because we believe it could be. Um, My best friend. Someone said one time that when you get married, you get another kind of helper. You get another kind of Holy Spirit. And the married folks, it, it, yeah, I mean, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. You got one on the inside. You get, you get him when you're born again. And then when you get married, you get one that's on the outside. One you can ignore, and the other one you better not ignore. Can some, and the wives then said amen to that. In other words, you might can ignore your wife or your husband, but you don't need to, nor do you need to ignore your other best friend, and that is the Holy Spirit, right? Several years ago, uh, Sandy and I were preparing to go overseas. We were missionaries for several years. And so part of what you do as a missionary is you travel around and you, you share uh, the mission or vision and you share your heart, where you're going at different churches and you pray. And, and there are uh, different churches or individuals that say, hey, I want to partner with you. I want to be a part of what God's doing through you. And just partner in that vision. And so that's what we were doing. We were going to different churches. And so I was actually invited. We were invited to go to this one great church. And it was such an honor to even be invited to speak in this pulpit of this, this uh, church and this pastor. And so um, the week prior to that, we were actually at a missions conference. We had this missions conference. And while we were there, uh, we had a, uh, the girls were younger then. They're grown adults now. But they were like five and six years old. And, and so we had a Dodge Caravan. Come on now. Dodge Caravan. We had the family ride. And, and so I took the Dodge Caravan in to have it all tuned up because I didn't want anything to go wrong when we were traveling from where we were at to, you know, our next stop where we'd be speaking at this church. And so they didn't want anything to go wrong. So I went and had it tuned up. So Saturday morning, we packed all of our stuff up at the hotel, and we, we're driving. We have about a four-hour drive. And so we're, we're driving along, and we're going from central Louisiana over into Texas. And so we're just driving, and um, all of a sudden, you know, some cloud this, this built up, and, and we had just a cloud burst. I mean, talk, who knows what I'm talking about? Just a big, just a ton of water coming down so, so quickly. And so when, when, the, when, the, when the old Dodge Caravan hit some of that water, it began to spit and sputter. It just began to miss really bad. And immediately, I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting agitated. I'm getting, I'm getting fearful because I'm thinking of all the times the old caravan needs to act up. This is not it, right? And so, so I pulled over and opened up the hood and looked inside. And I'm fairly mechanical, so I'm looking on the inside. And I'm not seeing anything out of order, anything wrong. And... We've had, to, again, just had tuned up. And so I get back in, and Sandy's over in the passenger seat, and she said, John, do you think it could be the distributor cap? <laughs> and I said, no, sweetheart. It's not the distributor cap. So we pray over it, and I, I, I turn the ignition switch, and this is before the push button days. I turn the ignition switch, and miraculously, it starts up. It's running fine. I put it in drive. We start going again. I went, we start praise God. We got a miracle on our hands. God has healed the Dodge Caravan. How many believes that God can? Man, God has healed the Dodge Caravan. Well, go a little ways down the road. Some more thunderstorms hit. We hit the water on the road. The thing starts messing up again. I'm like, oh, God. I get out again. The water, I, mean, I didn't even wait on the rain to stop. It's raining. I open the hood and I'm looking. And I'm getting frustrated. And I get back in and, 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 and Sandy said, look, I know you're upset, but I'm just going to say it one more time. John, could it be the distributor cap? Now, let me give you a little bit of the backstory. In my mind, I'm thinking, Sandy, in my, I didn't say this, but in my mind, I'm thinking, Sandy, 
If I open the hood, you could not point and tell me where the distributor came. That's what I'm thinking, right? But how many knows it's not wise always to say what you're thinking? So I didn't say that. I just graciously said, sweetheart, my love, it's not the distributor cap. And the reason I'm saying that is they had just replaced all that. It's all brand new. And I said, sweetheart, they just replaced it all. It's all brand new. We prayed over again, God. I mean, we even prayed in tongues this time. God, just please. We got serious, you know. It finally started out. We started out down the road. And, 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 and again, long story short, it started doing again when we got in this little town. And all the shops were closed because it was a Saturday. So there was like an auto zone or something like that. So I pulled in there, and it was still uh, just barely making it. And, and I got out, and one more time, Sandy said, John, I know, I know, I know. You don't want to hear this again, but what do you think about the distributor? I didn't say anything. I just closed the door oh so gently. I'm lying. I just <laughs> I closed the door, went up, and, and I looked at it. I'm thinking, I'm just going to look at it one more time so she will shut up about the distributor. I didn't say that. I was thinking that. And so I, 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 I reached down, and again, I'm fairly mechanical. And this is, the, you know, of course, distributor cap days. And she so had the distributor cap, and you had a coil. And I just reached down to, and pulled out the wire. I'm just like, God, help me. I'll just start pulling wires out until something doesn't happen. I just figured, you know, help me, Jesus. And so I, I, pulled, out, I pulled off the um, wire that goes from the distributor cap into the coil. And, and I noticed in the top of the distributor cap where it was at, there was a white film in there. Now I looked at the end of the, of the wire and the cable, and I thought, that doesn't look right. So I walked, I walked, back in, I walked inside of the auto zone or wherever it was, and I, I handed the guy this thing, and I said, does this look right? He looked at it and he said, no, it's defective. <laughs> yeah, you know what I was thinking. I should have been celebrating, oh, praise God, it's a $3 part. It's a $3 part, not a big deal, but I'm thinking... I got to go face my wife, <laughs> right? So I, I, I buy the $3 part. I walk in, put it in there, close the hood. I got back in, and, and I just started driving down the road. And I said, sweetheart, it's a $3 part. That's all it was. Praise God, it's a $3 part. didn't cost much. <laughs> Aren't you excited? It's a $3 part. God, praise God. And she's like, that's awesome. And so I really felt like, I really felt like God began to talk to me in that Dodge Caravan. <laughs> Yeah, he began to talk to me because in my heart, I knew, I knew that God was speaking to me through my best friend. I knew it. And I also, so I, I began to, in my heart, in my mind, I began to say, God, I know that you were speaking to me and I wasn't listening. And he said, yeah, not only were you not listening over the past hour and a half, there have been other times that I've been trying to say things through her and you've not been listening to her. So next, I'm like, God, should I tell her? <laughs> should, I, should, I, should I tell her? And then I said, sweetheart, we're driving along. My, my wife is just the most gracious person in the world. She really is. I said, sweetheart, I got something I need to tell you. I said, it was, it was the distributor cap. She said, you're joking me. It was the distributor cap. She said, really? Are you serious? I said, yeah. And I explained all. She said, John, she said, I don't even know where the distributor cap is. I just, I'm just clueless. I just don't want to put gas in this thing. That's all I know. She said, it had to be God. I said, sweetheart, I know. I know. I've already figured that out. I know. I get it, sweetheart. No. And, and I said, I said, Sandy, and there have been other times that God's been speaking through you to me and hadn't been listening to you and I'm going to say that's about to change around here so what 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 happened here's here's what happened here's what happened that day my best friend spoke through my best friend and helped me my best friend spoke through my best friend and helped me you said you got two best friends? Yeah, I got two. One is my wife, and the other is the Holy Spirit. 
And I'm not here for you to brag and say, he's just my best friend. The truth is, everybody listen to me, and this is the purpose of this message this evening, is that the purpose of this message is this. The Holy Spirit desires to be your best friend. He is the most important person on the planet. Never better amen than that in the Spirit-filled Holy Ghost Church. Because you could be here this evening going, oh, another, another message on the Holy Spirit. I've heard every one of them. Well, maybe you need to hear another one. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you see that you would see my hope and my desire. I believe God's hope and even the Holy Spirit's hope and desire is that you see him more than just an entity or just a source of power or just... Uh, symbolic of God's power because he's not. He's a person because he's a person. You can relate to him as a person and you can have a relationship with him. Can somebody say amen to that? Listen to how Jesus uh, describes and speaks of the Holy Spirit in John 14, 17. Listen to this. It says, he is the spirit of truth. Talking about the Holy Spirit. He, he is a what? Person. He is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him, but you recognize him because he lives uh, with you and will be where? In you. So Jesus, several times in these just a few statements, refers to the Holy Spirit not as an it or a being, but as a what? Person. Why? Because he wanted his disciples to know that, 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 that there was a moment in time that was coming that the Holy Spirit would live within them, that he was going to take up residence within them, and Jesus wanted them to relate to the Holy Spirit the same way that he related to the Holy Spirit. Do you know why Jesus could do all sorts of cool stuff? Do, do, you know, do you know why Jesus was able to communicate the way that he communicated? Do you know why that, the whole, that Jesus was able to, to lay hands on the sick and see them recover? Do you know why Jesus had the wisdom that he had? It wasn't simply because he was sinless. He had these things because the Holy Spirit was his best friend on this earth. That's the reason he related to him that way. <laughs> Amen. And so Paul believed it's possible to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 says, The amazing grace of the Master, Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, watch this, and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Isn't that a great scripture? But what did Paul say in regards to the Holy Spirit? He said this. He said, the intimate what? The intimate what? How can you have a friendship with a being? It's impossible. But Paul knew that the Holy Spirit was not just a being or an influence, that he is a what? He's a person. So everybody in this room, if you have any sort of relationship, you understand that one of the most common and most important parts of any relationship is communication. Can somebody say amen to that? If you're married, you understand that. You understand it's important. It's important to have good lines of communication uh, in place. Uh, if, if you're not married, you're single. I'm just telling you, when you get married, when you get married, look, you better get bad good at communicating. Can somebody say amen? Listen, somebody, somebody says, they, you know, when, when two couple, two individuals are getting together and they're going to get married, uh, you know, they, they, they come and they want to plan the wedding. By the way, I'm getting ready to have our last wedding of the Welch household on November the 9th, and I'm counting the days down. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus going to get a pay raise after the night hallelujah no just joking but that's what couples are excited about the wedding and i'm and i I like to say well the wedding is good but let's talk about how to communicate because that's going to be more important than that wedding after you get married again the married folks said amen to that so so the question today is this evening is this does god talk to people does god speak to people does god talk to people i mean does he still do that I believe he does. <laughs> how many likes to laugh? How, how many? How many thinks that there are t- places in the Bible that are funny? How many still read the Bible? 
<laughs> just trying to make sure. I don't know about you, but there are times in the Bible when I read the Bible, I just laugh. I just think it's hilarious. One, well, this one time that God's speak, uh, speaking to, uh, to Moses in Exodus 4, God's, trying, God's working with Moses. He's working with Moses, trying to help him and trying to encourage him to do what he's asking wants him to do. He wants him to be a, a redeemer, so to speak, for his people and go to Pharaoh, and Moses is struggling. And, and, and so the Lord's talking to him one day, and it says, The Lord said to him, The Lord what? He talked to him. He spoke to him, right? God spoke to Moses. Why? Because God loves to speak to people. He loves to speak to people. I like this. So he asked the question, what's in your hand? (laughs) This is so funny to me. What's in your hand? Uh, Can you imagine Moses is sitting there talking to God and God says, uh, Moses, what you got in your hand? And Moses is standing there and he's like, Now, you're the creator of the universe. <laughs> you created what this is made out of, God, and you're asking me. And, and so Moses very wisely answers God, and, and, and Moses says, it's a, it's a staff. And then God says, okay, Moses, throw your staff down. Just, just, just throw it down. I love this part. This is hilarious to me. So Moses takes the stick, the staff, he throws it down, and when he throws it down, it turns into a snake, and he runs. <laughs> I, I'm like, when I read that, when I read that, I'm like, I'd have done the same thing. I got, and I turned to God and said, God, that is not funny. <laughs> you could have made it a butterfly. You could have made it a hamburger. You could have made it whatever, but you made it a snake. That is not funny, God. If you're a snake lover, God help you. I'm just joking. They're God's creation too. They just got bad after the curse. Anyway. <laughs> or what about when, when, when Balaam, remember, remember the time that Balaam, there's this guy named Balaam, God was working with Balaam, trying to get him to obey him, trying to help him not make a bad decision. And so Balaam uh, gets on his donkey and he's riding down the little road, the path on his donkey. And so the donkey, <laughs> this is hilarious to me. So the donkey is carrying Balaam and the donkey can see this angel. I know you guys heard about this in Sunday school. It hasn't been that long since you were in Sunday school. <laughs> and so, so Balaam is, is uh, the donkey can see the angel that's trying to keep Balaam from making the bad decision. And so the, the donkey just lays down. Well, he starts pushing away at first and trying to back up. And, 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 ba- and Balaam just starts hitting this donkey. And it goes on for a little bit. And finally, the donkey just lays down. This is funny to me. He lays down. And you know what the donkey begins to do? He begins to talk. To Balaam. That's not the funny part. Balaam talks back to the donkey. I mean, they're having a conversation. The donkey's like, I like to say, the donkey. You watch Shrek, you know what I'm talking about. The, the donkey is talking to Balaam and saying, why are you beating me like this? And Balaam's like, because you're acting like a fool. They're having a, don- they're having a conversation. What is happening there? God, God's, God's speaking to Balaam. Why? Because God talks to people. God, God, God speaks to people. And then Jesus talked about that one day, and, and he says this, and it is, it is a statement that he makes in the present, but it's also somewhat of a prediction as well. Talking about God speaking. John ten twenty seven. listen to what Jesus said. God speaking. He says, my sheep recognize my what? Voice. My sheep recognize my voice. And I know them, and they do what? They In other words, the people, the, Jesus is referring to the people who follow him, the people who are submitted their lives to him, the people that will allow, uh, allow, them, allow God to lead them and guide them. He said what? He said, they recognize my what? In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm in the earth right now, and I'm talking, but I'm not going to stop talking when I leave this earth. I'm going to keep speaking, and I'm going to keep talking when I leave this what? Why? Because God loves to talk to people. Do you know why? Because the most relational person you'll ever meet in your life is God. He's the most relational person you'll ever meet. And he loves to talk to people. And he loves to guide and help. So Jesus said, they're going to follow me. So he, he made the promise that he's going to talk. He made the promise. 
then I'm going to speak. I'm going to talk, right? But then uh, he also made the prediction and said they're going to follow. I'm going to talk, they're going to listen, and then they're going to follow. So last time I checked, Jesus is at the right hand of God. Death, burial, and resurrection thing, right? He walked around the earth for a little while, several days, gave some instructions, and he says, boys and girls, I'm out of here. And today he's seated at the right hand of God, right? But he made the promise, didn't he? He said, I'm, I'm talking, and they're going to follow. Those who listen, they're going to follow me. So how does, that, how does that work then if he's in heaven? Well, he solved the problem. In John 16, 14, he said, he, ta- he will bring me glory. Talking about the Holy Spirit. He will bring me glory, watch this, by telling you whatever he receives from what? Who's he talking about? The Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus is still speaking. Who does he speak through? He speaks through the person of the Holy Spirit. Where does the Holy Spirit live? He lives where? Anybody excited about the Holy Spirit living in you and Jesus talking? (laughs) Come on now. Man, I just love this. This is so exciting to me. This is so, so amazing to me that, the, that Jesus is still speaking, and he's speaking through the Holy Spirit, and we can, hear what he, we can hear what he's saying, and we can be led by what he's saying, and we can make good choices and make decisions, and we can have a better life. Can somebody say amen to that? We can be who God calls us to be because he's speaking to us. I love it. So three ways that he speaks to us. Are you ready for this? Three ways. That he, three, different, um, three different means by which he speaks. Number one, he speaks to us personally. The Holy Spirit lives in us and he speaks to us personally. Like a one-on-one thing. Romans 8, 14, it says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? Who? Children of God. Are you a child of God? Amen. Does the Holy Spirit live in you? Amen. Well, then you can be led by the Spirit of God personally. One time when we were, um, we were getting ready to build a facility and, and we lived out west, um, we, were, we couldn't find, we were looking for property, and needed the right place. Who knows that building in the right place is important? So we were praying about it and thinking about it and, and, and just pursuing, trying to figure out exactly where it was supposed to be. And as we were praying, and I was, I was praying, I just feel like in my heart that we need to move, we need to build out towards the, the Walmart area. That's all I got, just kind of out in the Walmart area. And so we would, I would drive around, and, and there was a few places for sale, but it just it was either uh, in the wrong place, wrong price. And, and so I would drive in different areas of the city, just driving and looking around. And, and it just seemed like whenever I would drive away from that area, the, the less of a piece I would have. You know what I'm saying? It was just on the inside of it, we'd be driving away from that area of the city. And it was just like on the inside, it was like, no, 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 it's, 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 it's around Walmart. I was like, well, God, I can't see it. Holy Spirit, you got to help me. Long story short, one day I was driving over an overpass right about three quarters of a mile, a half a mile from the Walmart, across the interstate, driving across, and I look over into a field, and there was a sign that had been blown down. We were living in Laramie, Wyoming. The wind blows a lot. And so I thought, well, either the sign has uh, uh, been blown down or it's already been bought, and they just pushed the sign down and left it. But, but again, there was something on the inside that was like, no, 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 go check that out. So I went and pulled over by where the property's at, crawled over the fence, went over, and I had to literally, I had to get the dirt off the, off the sign to get the number. I'm standing in the field over this sign with my cell phone, make the call, a person answers. And I said, look, I'm standing in this field. How many acres is it? Is it still for sale? We're a church. Tell me what you're thinking. And said, they said, yeah, it's still for sale, 26 acres. Gave me the details. And I was thinking, we could have a deal here. And you know what? If you drive there today, guess what's there? There's a nice facility. It's there. And let me tell you something else that happened during that time. During that time... Some of our church folks, were, they, they were like, Pastor, but, but that's kind of out on the, way out on the edge of town. It's way out on the edge of town. And I said, I realize that. I said, but here's what's going to happen. I said, the city's going to grow that way. 
city's going to grow that way. And, and so there were some doubters, and I was just like, well, I, you know, if you don't, sooner or later, maybe when we get to heaven, you'll see that I was right. But anyway, I mean, <laughs> we'll see. So just uh, last year, actually it was about this time, we were out, uh, out in Laramie where we just went out for vacation and hanging out in the, in the Rockies and just, just having a great time. Well, of course, I drove by the facility, and guess what's out there now? There's neighborhoods out there. There's a new high school out there. There's some hotels out there. There's, I mean, it's abs- what used to be just blank open pasture and fields is now filled up. Can somebody say thank God for the Holy Spirit because he will talk to us and he will lead us in a personal way. Amen? Amen. Another way that he'll, he'll lead us, and listen very closely to this because I want you to hear it correctly is that, that he, he will speak to us. He will speak to us personally. He'll also speak to us in circumstances. Listen now. He'll speak to us in circumstances. Don't get that confused with God speaking to you through circumstances. Okay? There is a difference. Because the Holy Spirit will speak to us, Jesus will speak to us through the Holy Spirit in circumstances, but don't get it confused with God speaking through circumstances because today a lot of Christians believe that God will speak through circumstances. Listen, I've seen it so many times and you can get yourself in some real trouble if you believe that God is going to speak to you through circumstances around you. But he'll certainly speak to you in circumstances. Can somebody say amen to that? In other words, God doesn't necessarily create the circumstances. But listen to me. He'll take advantage of the circumstance that you may find yourself in. (laughs) He'll use them. He's an opportunist. But listen to me. There are times where the Holy Spirit will speak to us in situations, listen to this, to create tension. Everybody listen to me. Tension can be good. There are times that the Holy Spirit will speak to us in circumstances to create tension. Listen to me. Because, because tension creates tension. Movement. If you put tension, if you hook a rope to something and you put tension on it, what's going to happen? There's movement. Are you following me? Let me give you an example of this. It's not hostility. It's not being, it's not tension. I'm talking about being awkward. But tension, listen to me at times, will pull us into God's best. Here's an example. John 6, 67 and 68. It says, Then Jesus said to the 12 followers, Will you leave me also? Well, well, what's gone down? What's happened? Well, things were amazing. The ministry was going great. And then there was some folks that started leaving. Jesus spoke to uh, I felt like Jesus spoke to me one time. And, you know, there were some, there were some folks. Uh, we were, actually, we were, we were transitioning. We were, our church was growing. And we were transitioning into that new facility that I was talking about earlier. And, and, and let me just say this. Let me just say this. Sometimes Christian church folks can get weird in a transition. Can, can I just camp out on this just for a moment? Let me pastor you through this in just a second. I said weird, but I, I almost said stupid, but I didn't let it come out because I felt like if there were visitors here tonight, I didn't need to say stupid. I just said, but they just get weird. Because we like it like it is. We like our Whatever. Like it is. We like it to stay the same. Listen to me. Nothing stays the same. Even churches, relationships, nothing stays the same. You start aging a little bit, and I'm telling you, nothing stays the same. When I was younger, I thought, well, that ain't going to happen to me when I get that age. Well, (laughs) I am fighting it, but nevertheless. 
So the ministry was going great, and then all of a sudden, some of the people said, well, I'm out of here, Jesus. So li- listen, to what Jesus, listen to what Jesus says. And Jesus said to the 12 followers, li- listen to what he said, will you leave me also? Again, several years ago when there were some folks that were leaving because of some transition and changes, I, 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 was, I got down over it. I just, it bothered me. And then I felt like the Lord spoke to me if, as if Jesus spoke to me. And he said, look, if they left my ministry, there's a good chance they'll leave yours. <laughs> That's a good word, Lord. <laughs> Can you feel that tension, though, when Jesus turns to the 12 and says, where are you going? Are you going to stay or are you going to go? But listen to what Peter said. But Peter said to him, Lord... Who else can we go to? For you have the words that give life and that last for what? Forever. The point is, Jesus didn't create the circumstances of people leaving. But he certainly took advantage of it to locate where his disciples were at. And in that moment, he asked them a question. He spoke to them and he said this, what are you going to do? And Peter said this. In his statement, he was saying, Jesus, I'm not staying. I'm not running away from your best. I'm not running away from change. I'm not running when it gets hard. I'm not running when it gets tough. Jesus, I am hanging with you. And how many of you know that it paid off for Peter? Just read the rest of his life. You never heard about the rest of them that left. But oh, Pete. So God speaks to us, and the Holy Spirit speaks to us in circumstances, and, and he'll challenge us to create that tension. But it's not to make us feel bad. More often, it's to pull us into God's best. Do you guys get anything out of this tonight? And he'll also speak through others. He'll also speak through others. It's one of the reasons it's so important, so, so important, that you build healthy relationships. You'll build healthy relationships. So it happened in that van that night or that day with Sandy. That God spoke through her. God spoke through her. I can't spend a lot of time on that. You say, well, how, I want God to speak to me. What, where does it start at? I, I'd love for the Holy Spirit, my best friend, to speak to me more. Well, well number one, write this down. You've you got to hunger and desire for it. You've you got to want to hear you got to want to hear what Jesus has to say. you got to want to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. That's Jesus said in, John, in Mark 4, 9. He said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. In other words, you got to want to hear. you got to want to listen. you got to want to hear what Jesus is saying through the Holy Spirit. The head of the church is saying through the Holy Spirit. So you got to hunger and desire. And as I wrap up this, this evening, you got to speak his language. You say, oh, you're speaking and talking about speaking in tongues. No, no, no. Thank God that we can speak in tongues, and that is for today, and that's one of the things I do about every day. One of the things I do every day is I pray some, I spend some time praying in the Spirit. No, no, his his language really is the Bible. His language is the Bible. His language is the Bible. He's never going to say anything different than what the Word of God says. You've got to be able to validate what you believe He's saying to you through the Word of God. That's the reason it's important that we read the Bible. Styles may change, but things may change, but reading the Bible should never change. Hearing the Bible should never change. And the last one is this. If you really want to hear Him and you really want to be serious, is that that comes with acknowledgement. You have to acknowledge his, his presence and his role in your life. You have to acknowledge that. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus is walking through the city and he's invited into somebody's house. Her name was Martha. Her name was Martha. And um, so when he gets in the house, if you've read the Bible very much, you, you'll, you'll remember this, this account. So he gets in the house and he sits down and there's Martha's sister's in there and her name's Mary. And so Jesus sits down. Mary comes in and she just sits down and Jesus starts teaching and Mary's listening. And then, and then Martha, Martha is running all over the place. She's trying to get the house clean. Jesus is in the house. 
I don't know if I don't know if Martha's house was like ours, but when we used to tell the kids, hey, we need to pick the living room up, they would say, well, who's coming over? <laughs> Nobody's coming over. You just need to pick your shoes up. Jesus is already in the house. He lives here with us. Amen. Holy Spirit, he's already in the house. He lives here with us. So Martha, she's scrambling around. She's trying to take care of getting everything cleaned up. And remember that she came to Jesus and said, Jesus... Would you tell Mary to help me? He said, no, I'm not going to do that. The difference between Martha and Mary is that Martha was busy just doing stuff. But, but, but Mary, she recognized that Jesus was in the house. She acknowledged that Jesus was in the house and he had something to say to her. And she wanted to listen. Many Christians are a lot like Martha. A lot like Martha. Busy, 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 busy. But I think we need to be more like Mary. To say, you know what, Jesus, I recognize that what you have to say to me, I'm one of your sheep. I need to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice because I want you to lead me and guide me and I want you to help me. I want you to help me do life better. I want you to help me get better at doing life. I want you to help me get better at accomplishing your purpose and plan for my life. Sometimes I think the Holy Spirit, He's just, He's in our lives, He's in us, He's in the house, so to speak, but He's just standing over in the corner and we're just rushing and moving and trying and we're trying to get the right answer, trying to get, to get life and doing better. And the best friend, He's just standing over here. And He's just waiting on us. He's just waiting on us. To go, you know what? I believe that you're more than just a power that's here. You're a person. And I want you to be my best friend. And I'm going to listen to what you have to say. And what happens is the Holy Spirit comes out of the corner. And He begins to lead us and help us and guide us and show us. And see, listen to me. It's just like any relationship when it comes to a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You have to work at it. You have to work at it. But it starts with a desire. It starts with wanting to hear it starts to saying I recognize that Holy Spirit you're in my life to help me and I want you to be my best friend every day talk to him every day every day talk to him thanks for listening to the Word of Life Center podcast you can connect with us on Facebook and Twitter or at our website wordoflifecenter.org